Um, sometimes, you know, we just want people to get it and to heal so badly. And um, it, it might, it's none of my business really where they are on their path. Yes, I can have concern and compassion and care, but I can't do it for them. The greatest gift, and I'm really getting it, and I know I'm peeling it away more and more, is the greatest gift that each and every one of us can bring to this world is our own light. Not trying to fix and point our fingers and change someone else. And so if you really want to do some good work on the world, it's time to really look in the mirror at yourself and do your own work. Um, we need to continually ask for guidance and to be led. Train our minds. I love what A Course in Miracles says. It's a course in mind training. It's training us to align our thoughts with the still small voice, that internal teacher, the Holy Spirit, whatever you choose to call it. But we're continually being led and met where we are with a sincere desire and intention to wake up, to be the best we can be. And we don't even know what that looks like. We're so busy uh, thinking that we know what our best interests are, but we really don't have a clue. And sometimes we're working so hard, this is me, to make something work, but the spirit or the universe can't give it to us because I'm so focused on this that there's all this grandeur over here waiting to be dropped in our laps but we're so focused on this that it can't happen. So surrender. I talk about that all the time. We've got forgiveness. Here at the Namaste Center, this 2018 is a year of forgiveness. And really look at every uh, dark spot where we're still holding judgments and resentments and grievances and, and be willing to heal those and peel that away. Shine the light on it. Let it go. We don't have to hang on to this anymore. So I, I want to, um, of course, Course in Miracles has been such a blessing to me, as well as um, lately the Way of Mastery. And, and that's been a, a wonderful blessing dropped back into my life as well. Uh, Tuesdays here at Namaste at uh, 11, we have, we have that group. And it's a, a fabulous uh, study group. But the Course in Miracles says, healing only strengthens. Magic always tries to weaken. Mm -hmm. Healing perceives nothing in the healer that everyone else does not share with them. Magic always sees something special in the healer, which he believes he can offer as a gift to someone who does not have it. He may believe that the gift comes from God to him, but it is quite evident that he does not understand God if he thinks he has something that others lack. And that's so important. Um, we got to get people um, off the pedestal. We're all, you know, the biggest, one of the biggest mistakes I think we've ever made in understanding Jesus is that he came to us as our elder brother, our teacher, our friend, to demonstrate what's potential and possible within each and every one of us. He never put himself up on this, up on this uh, pedestal. Beings, uh, churches have maybe done that. I don't think that's a healthy uh, place for Jesus to be. Jesus was a very friendly, fun-loving guy. He'd be here sitting in the crowd and just be in that presence of love, which he came to demonstrate is in all of us. So we have to be careful not to think that someone else can do the work for us or someone's not more spiritual or not more evolved or you're less spiritual or less, um, it, we, that's got to go because there's no empowerment in that as long as we're given someone else. And what I found is as soon as we put someone else up on that pedestal and have that expectation, what do you think happens? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, they, they get kicked off because all of a sudden <clears throat> you didn't give me what I needed from you. Well, you never loved that person in the first place because you had an expectation. You had a need. You, uh, once we do that, that becomes not love, but, but it turns in, as A Course of Miracles says, to hate. Uh, because we've made them special, so that special love turns into special hate. Our role is to love as God loves, which is unconditionally, totally, uh, even though the form of our relationships may be different, the content we're seeking needs to be the same. The content is unconditional, total love and appreciation. Yeah, we have different forms of relationships. Yes, there's some people that maybe we're not 
in tune with, and that's okay too. We can still love them unconditionally. Look at where you're getting your buttons pushed and take them into the altar of your heart and ask that to be transformed so that we can see everybody in that circle as, as equal and whole and healed. Well, uh, our friends um, Bob Sima and Shannon, uh, a great song that they uh, have sung for a while now. It's called Healed People Heal People. We can only heal, uh, we can only teach by demonstrating, not by preaching, not by anything more than demonstrating. Who we are speaks louder than anything that we can say. So we have to be in alignment with that message. Uh, I love what, um, if you know, we talk about this, uh, excuse me, <coughs> we talk about this uh, new paradigm or awakening, whatever it is, whatever it is we're moving into, God only knows. Um, it's exciting. We're in exciting times. As I said in the meditation, we're here in a area, a part of the world that was literally a gathering place right here in Flat Rock. Uh, and Julie, our friend Julie pointed that out this week, that the sacredness of this area and the tribes that would come here to meet and gather uh, to really, you know, ground that healing mother earth energy you know really bring love and healing to it so we are in a really awesome place and so we can gather strength from this land we really can and to share that and so we have to uh, we have to do the work though we have to come together we have to heal and let go of the past so the new paradigm ain't coming this new awakening whatever it is can't come if we're clinging to the past, okay? So um, a quote from A Course in Miracles, again, says, learning itself, like the classrooms in which it occurs, is temporary. The ability to learn has no value when change is no longer necessary. The eternally creative have nothing to learn. Only while there's a belief in differences is learning meaningful, and I would add necessary. So if we, if we really got it, there's nothing we need to learn. We really are in a process of unlearning. And so all these belief systems and values and judgments and what we think is right and wrong, good and bad, you know, we have to let all that go and just be open and just be led and guided. Because eventually, you know, how many uh, books do we need to read? How many seminars do we need to take? We already got it. It's about letting go and receiving, being that empty vessel. I, you know, I've lost interest, to be honest with you, in, in reading. I, because I think that all of the teachings, many are um, helpful. They can be useful. They can be helpful. But they are also based often in the past. And if we're going to move into this new earth, which Eckhart Tolle spoke so beautifully of and others, then we really need to... Uh, make space for that to come in. But if I continue to dig into books and this and that, well, that's fun too and it can be useful. But what am I doing that for? Ultimately, uh, once we're healed, we just recognize we've had it all along, which is the message of our friend Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz uh, from years and years ago. I just watched that again the other night, monkeys and all. And uh, this thing still scary. Um, and uh, but anyway, they, it's uh, it's a powerful message, my dear. You've had it all along, and that was the the message of the whole story. And yes, we all have too. Um, as I mentioned earlier, and I confirm this again, um, support uh, the the two groups I've chosen to facilitate this year. As I said. You know, we teach what we need to learn. We all do, whether we admit it or not. And I, I really, again, the side-by-side uh, -side teachings, which is A Course in Miracles and 12 Steps, we're all in recovery. If we're not awake, we're recovering from something, okay? So we're here to just look at this and support each other and not judge each other. And the power of the group expands tenfold, hundredfold our ability to heal. Um, I am in awe of all the other groups we have here that offer that support. 
I know uh, Dr. Bob's group, you know, I popped in on them last week just to make sure they were behaving themselves, and <laughs> they were. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of healing that takes place in there, and lots of great messages, and, and other groups that we have here, I mean, be it yoga and uh, the miracles and healing groups, I mean, there's so many opportunities, and I think that it's for me to remind you, we are <coughs> alone on this journey. <coughs> And it's important to reach out and connect so that we can heal together. Um, so I found this um, from the Way of Mastery. And it says, no one is special or more enlightened. When you've singled someone out and think they hold greater value, that is not love, but fear. Where would you be if they leave? And that's so true because again, that's how we just keep setting ourselves up and getting let down. Um, I claim my role in that and I recognize it and I choose to, to let that one go as well. I really want to be comfortable and, and in my own skin. I wanna be happy. I wanna be able to enjoy my life and I want that for each and every one of you guys and you guys out there. So um, God is not partial. All his children have his total love, and all his gifts are given to everyone freely. Um, no one's exempt from God's love, but we have free will. It's that free will thing that we have to accept. We have to open ourselves up to be willing to choose love over fear at every moment. Release old paradigms and patterns of thought that keep us recycling the same experiences over and over. And you know, I'm finding it's not the easiest of things to do, but it's certainly worth it. Um, actually, I take that back. It seems like it's not easy, but it is easy. If we just, uh, it's actually, is, it's our more natural state. It's actually much more difficult to hang on to the crap than it is the good stuff, the, the freeing stuff. But we just got to train ourselves to go down that path. Um, I want to just, uh, the Course uh, also says, this is one of my favorite quotes, because it says, miracles occur naturally as expressions of love. They are performed by those who temporarily have more for those who temporarily have less. And I think that sort of explains it. That's why we sort of need each other. You know, I have gifts in certain areas, and so do each and every one of you. And I may be more aware of certain things, and you may be more aware of me than me of certain things. So that's how we, we heal, is we bounce off each other. We, those of us that temporarily seem, I would say, seem to have more than those, uh, because we really don't in truth, but in this, in this illusion or dream, it may seem like I have more or you have more in a certain area. But when we can exchange that, you know, we don't heal alone. So make sure that we, are, we recognize our gifts and we share those freely. And, you know, one thing I, I recognize too, it seems, uh, you know, as I've said, we, we got to take people off the pedestal. And I think we do that because we're afraid to look at our own darkness. We're afraid to look at our own stuff. We want someone else to do it for us. We want a list of rules and regulations and commandments to live by. And then you realize that, hmm, uh, I got to do it myself. Uh, that's, that seems like a lonely road sometimes. And it doesn't have to be. I know that I think it was Rantha who I heard say, you know, what depression is, is, is knowing that there's no one else who can do it for us. No one else who can fix it for us. And that does make a lot of sense. And it keeps coming back around and coming back around till we recognize that truth. So um, the blessing that, and my, you know, goal here uh, at the Namaste Center is for us all to to value each other and support each other and see each other's gifts and not be so tempted to defend and attack and judge and condemn. Look, I'm not perfect. I, I know, I know, don't guess. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, far from it, you know, I, I, but I, I don't think I've ever intended to come up here and say that I am. I am perfect as a child of God and so are you. But I've also got many, um, beliefs that I need to look at to be more present, more aware. So we've got this blessing of each other in the center to really use it to, to take advantage of, of um, the gifts that we all have to share. 
And I know that it's, um, although, you know, we do live in a 3D world, we've got, we've got bills to pay, we've got electric, we've got rent, you know, we, we, unfortunately, I wish we could do it all for free. Sort of goes back to those who temporarily have more, maybe can pitch in a little more, and those who don't have it at the time can come anyway. I don't want anyone to ever feel like it's, that they, oh, there's a fee on this and I can't come. I know that every one of our facilitators and uh, teachers, although there may be a suggested offering, would never turn anyone away. So I don't want to hear that as an excuse. I've heard people say, well, I'd like to have this, but I can't afford it. Nope, that's your own crap. Uh, I said a dirty <laughs> word. Uh, so, you know, uh, last night on Saturday Night Live, uh, it, it's live, you know. The one guy dropped an F-bomb on there. I was like, whoa. So, yes, I was up till midnight. But, um, but anyway, I was like, uh-oh. So anyway, I almost dropped the S-bomb. Um, hmm, someone else did this week, too. Um, but anyway, um, you know, it's, uh, so I think that the question is, you know, this, we don't have to just, um, we don't have to just, uh, uh, look at new year's resolutions or you know and, and those are hokey you know it's but it's kind of like a reset i look at new year's as a reset okay and unfortunately you know you get to that you get that momentum and it fizzles out let's just keep building on that momentum let's support each other and know that my salvation my awakening is dependent on everybody getting it and healing together we, we don't heal alone because as, as of course a miracles also says God is incomplete without me and um, that means until we all come back to that uh, realization and that our home in heaven which is to be awake and awake from the dream then we're, we're, we're not complete so my salvation is on all of us getting it so take a mutual interest in, in each other's healing and waking up because that's how we do it together, not separate. And so um, the quote that I close with, it says, tolerance for pain may be high, but it is not without limit. Eventually, everyone begins to recognize, however dimly, that there must be a better way. As this recognition becomes more firmly established, it becomes a turning point. This ultimately reawakens spiritual vision, simultaneously weakening the investment in physical sight. The alternating investment in the two levels of perception is usually experienced as conflict, which can then become very acute, but the outcome is as certain as God. Well, the good news is tolerance may be high, but it's not without limit. So how high, well like in 12 steps they say you don't have to get off the elevator at the bottom floor. You know, how much do we really want to tolerate? Yeah, we can, we don't have to go to the bottom floor before we get off and that's the good news. Right here, right now, every moment, I recommit. And you have a bad day, you have a bad decision, you get funky about this or that, that's okay. As our friend Bob Stevens always says, I recommit, I recommit in this moment. Don't beat yourself up. You don't have to analyze. You don't have to judge. Just recommit because the good news is the best is yet to come. And that's the truth. And so it is. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.